Out of all the intensity techniques in the world, one has, by far, the most science behind it. And it's not drop sets. It's not forced reps, or supersets, or cheat reps. It's actually a technique called long length partials. And a lot of new evidence suggests that not only do long length partials beat out all those other techniques, they may also be even better than a standard full range of motion. That's why you've probably seen so many people in the fitness space doing them lately. So in this video, I wanna explain why I think they work so well, how to use them, and some common mistakes I see people making. First, what exactly are long length partials? Well, they're pretty simple. Let's say you're doing a bicep curl. A full range of motion would be when you go all the way up and all the way down, taking the elbow from about zero degrees at the bottom to about 150 degrees at the top. But we can split that full range of motion up into two halves. Doing curls in the top half would be short length partials because the biceps are more contracted. And doing curls in the bottom half would be long length partials because the biceps are more stretched. And as you stretch a muscle, it gets longer, hence the name long length partials. So to figure out if a muscle is at a long length or not, just think about which half of the range of motion stretches the muscle the most, and that's the half you want. So on squats, you can see what a short length partial looks like here on the left, and you can see what a long length partial looks like on the right. And notice that with the long length partials, I'm still getting a deep stretch on my quads and glutes in the bottom, but then I'm only going about halfway up to the top. So I'm cutting out the squeezed part. By contrast, with short length partials, you only go halfway down, so you're completely cutting out the deep stretch, and I wouldn't recommend doing these. On lat pull downs, a long length partial would look like this, where you only go about halfway down to your chest. And again, that's because the lats are more stretched at the top with the arms up overhead. And while most serious lifters still assume that a full range of motion is always best, over the last few years, a growing pile of research has shown that it is in fact the stretched part of the range that triggers the most muscle growth, not full range of motion per se. Just consider this. As of now, there are eight studies comparing long length partials to short length partials. And seven of those eight studies found that long length partials were better for muscle growth. One study found no difference and no studies favored short length partials. But it gets even better because we now also have five studies comparing a full range of motion to long length partials. And four of those five studies found that long length partials were better for muscle growth than a full range of motion. Just one study found no difference and no studies favored full ROM. But the thing is, even in the study that found no difference, it only used 10% of full range for the partial group. So half the subjects in this study were only doing one tenth reps, again, in the stretch part, and still saw equal growth to the group doing full ROM. So not only are long length partials clearly better than short length partials, they might be better than full range of motion at least in some cases. Now, in case it seems like I'm overstating the evidence here, I spoke with the world's leading researcher in this area, Dr. Mila Wolf, and he seemed just as excited about long length partials as me. Personally, in my own training for about nine or 10 months now, I've been doing exclusively length and partials for all of my hypertrophy work. What I've noticed when I, I speak about length and partials or anything that's like new and exciting in bodybuilding, there's a camp of people who are like, oh, this is the new sexy thing that everyone's talking about and I'm sure the hype will die down and this kind of thing. I should reiterate that neither you nor I are advertising this as like a really, really groundbreaking thing. It's just like, hey, if you're not trying this, like it really does seem to work. 100%. On your note of not being groundbreaking, we're expecting an improvement in your growth of maybe five or 10% using length and partials versus full range of motion. So if you're all about maximizing your hypertrophy, that's meaningful. At this point, I'm pretty confident that length and partials are something that should be included in your training if you're after hypertrophy. But it also shouldn't be super surprising that training in the stretched aspect of a lift is good for muscle growth. For years, we've had a pretty good idea that stretch-mediated hypertrophy is a thing. Remember this classic bird study where researchers saw crazy gains in the wing of a quail when it was stretched under load? And then in human studies, we've known for years that lifting at long muscle lengths is effective. So there are two ways I use long length partials in my current training. The first is as an intensity technique to extend the last set I do for a muscle beyond the typical failure point. I mainly reserve this method for two muscles, my hamstrings, in my back. That's because on pretty much every back exercise, you'll reach a point where you can't get the weight all the way down, but you could still crank out another five or six partial reps in the top half if you really went for it. Now, most science-based lifters will stop the set once they can no longer get the bar all the way down to their chest, but your back actually has quite a bit of gas left in the tank if you were to keep going with partial reps. So on select sets of pull downs, usually the last set, once I hit that point where I can't touch the bar to my chest, instead of stopping, I'll keep going with partial reps, trying to get the bar down as far as I can without breaking technique. And then I'll terminate the set once I can only get the bar about halfway down. You could also do these on your last set of pull-ups. So once you can no longer touch your chest to the bar, keep going with long 
length partials on your last set. The same thing goes for rows. Once you can no longer get that full squeeze, keep going in the stretched part until you can no longer get the weight about halfway up. Usually this will allow me to get another three to six partial reps. I also do the same thing for hamstrings. That's because they're another unique muscle where you can always crank a whole lot more reps after you've exhausted the full range of motion. Once you can no longer get that full squeeze at the top, your hamstrings still have a lot more juice left. So after I reach that usual stopping point, I just keep going with another five or six partials until I can't get the weight at least halfway up and then I'll terminate the set. Now, in theory, you could keep going with quarter reps and eighth reps until you literally just can't budge the weight, but that might be overkill in my opinion. Regardless, I'd say the most important thing is standardizing your range of motion so that you pick the same endpoint from week to week. That way you can be consistent with tracking your progress. And again, I'm not doing this level of intensity for every set of every exercise. If you were to do that, you'd most likely see a dramatic fall off in your performance toward the end of the workout and your volume would most likely take a hit as a result. You could also run into recovery issues, especially if your diet and sleep aren't optimized. Now, the second way I use lengthened partials is not as an end of set intensity technique, but rather on every single rep of a set. This is actually how I use them in my new pure bodybuilding program. On the last set of several exercises, we do long length partials on every rep of that set. This is how Dr. Wolf recommended that I do them since you get to spend more total time in the most anabolic part of the range of motion. Why water the set down with time spent in the less anabolic part of the range was what he said. So for example, on week one, day one, we're doing all long length partials on the last set of chest supported machine rows. So on rep one, we only go halfway up and then we continue with half reps in the lengthened aspect until we get to rep 10, which should have us right at failure if we selected the appropriate weight. And it's worth noting that you may need to go a bit heavier when doing partials. It also makes a lot of sense to do lengthened partials on dumbbell flies. And that's because with dumbbell flies, you already have this very lopsided resistance curve where there's tons of tension in the bottom and virtually zero tension at the top. But maybe that's not such a bad thing because we now know that the lengthened part of the range is the most important part. And dumbbell flies naturally emphasize the lengthened part. So I recently rethought how I feel about dumbbell flies. In the past, I've argued that they're most likely inferior to cable flies because with cables, you get much more continuous resistance throughout the range of motion, which is true. But in light of all this new evidence, I'd say dumbbell flies aren't a bad option at all, especially if you lean into their inherent stretch bias further by cutting out the top half of the movement and just hitting them all as partial reps. Now, I still do cable flies because I think variety is important, but whenever I do dumbbell flies, these days I pretty much always do them as long length partials. I've also been playing around with lengthened partials on the Smith machine press, and man, the pump you feel from these and the deep stretch you get is just fantastic. And I've been experimenting with them on leg presses too, and so far I do find the partial reps more enjoyable. There's something nice about only having to do half the ROM and still reaping all the gains. It's not that they're easier, if anything, I'd say they're harder because you don't get that tiny mini rest at full lockout, but I still think they're super fun. Now, as a slightly different technique, you can try something called integrated partials, where rather than leaving all your lengthened partials until the end of the set, you can sprinkle them in throughout the set. I've been doing these on the pec deck where I'll alternate full range of motion reps with long length partial reps. So I'll do one full rep, one half rep, one full rep, one half rep, and so on until I reach failure. And I think they're a solid option because they allow you to spend more total time in the most anabolic part of the range of motion without completely omitting the contracted part. And I also find they keep the set more engaging and cause a crazy pump. Okay, so when it comes to mistakes, I'd say the biggest one I see is people just losing control when they start doing partial reps. For whatever reason, a lot of people have it in their heads that partial reps are cheat reps. And so they just let their form completely go loose once they start doing partials. But this is a mistake because a partial rep should still be treated like any other rep, meaning you still control the negative, you still minimize momentum, and you still feel that deep stretch at the bottom. The second most common mistake I see is people not limiting their range of motion enough on the partials. People like myself who are accustomed to using a full range of motion are really often shy to cut their range of motion short and end up just skipping the lockout. So they're still actually doing 90% of the full range of motion. This is fine enough, but it isn't a true long length partial. At least that's not how they're done in the studies. In the research, the subjects are doing half reps. So don't be scared to cut the range of motion significantly down. And as long as you still maintain good control, you still push the set just as hard as you normally would, you don't need to worry about missing out on any gains. And if you buy into the research, you should actually make better gains. A mistake I'm seeing mostly online is overhyping long length partials. For example, I recently uploaded a YouTube short explaining why I'm still a fan of the cable triceps kickback. And a lot of people were quick to point out that the kickback overloads the triceps in the more shortened position, not the stretched position. So wouldn't that mean it's worse for muscle growth? 
I do get the argument, but I personally think this is over extrapolating the current evidence. While I do find the new research convincing, and I have been applying long length partials to my own training, I also don't think there's enough evidence to completely throw out all exercises that bias a more shortened position, especially if it's an exercise that we've been doing for decades with good results. I also don't think that the evidence is strong enough, at least not yet, to completely cut out the top half and only do partial reps on every exercise. I think that as of now, using a combination of full range of motion and long length partials is still best. And in general, I still lean toward people using a full range of motion most of the time with long length partials having those specific applications that we talked about. And that's because even though long length partials are gaining momentum in the research, full range of motion has decades of empirical support. And when you zoom out and look at the literature as a whole, long length partials really aren't miles ahead. I think that at this point, the best you can say is that long length partials clearly work better than short length partials and at least work as well as full range of motion and maybe even better in some cases. Now, if you'd like to listen to my full discussion with Dr. Wolf about this topic, I'll put a link to that podcast in the description box down below. And if you're looking to put all this information together into an actionable program that you can just go to the gym and execute without having to overthink anything, you can pick up my new pure bodybuilding program over on jeffnipper.com. This is the only program I've ever released that is 100% dedicated toward pure hypertrophy and that uses not only long length partials, but a bunch of other really fun exercises and techniques that I haven't seen many people doing yet. The program also comes with a free nutrition guide so you can get your diet in check, whether your main goal is fat loss, muscle gain, or both, and it's 20% off for launch week. So I'll put a link to that over here next to my head if you'd like to check it out. And thanks guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.